Hello everybody and welcome to Wags's Wings episode 13. In this episode we're going to look at a few of the idiosyncrasies of a couple of the aircraft in Rise of Flight which are not explained uh, very well if at all when you buy those aircraft but make them a bit of a problem when you first fly them. Again, in the theme of my last video, I want to um, create a few guides for beginners. And if you're a beginner and you're, uh, you'd like to buy the SE5, or some of the aircraft we'll look at today, um, and you want to learn how to master them, here are some tips. So the SE5 um, is a wonderful British aircraft, very, very fast. As far as I know, it's the fastest uh, game, uh, aircraft in the game. Um, it uh, also has a Lewis gun you can tilt upwards and it turns very very well very maneuverable at speed likewise it has an excellent roll rate but one of the problems with the SE5 is the default uh, setting for the elevator so one thing that you may notice the SE5 it, before you've uh, done anything to the response curves is that it noses up all the time and tends to drift to one side so I'm going to show you how I was taught to fix this by uh, some of my friends on the online forums. So the first thing you want to do is going to the options, to the responses, and we see here SE5 selected. Now the default setting for the elevator on the SE5 is like this. So or is this part of it is. So the pitch is, so this here, just to explain, uh, the white little X crosshair is uh, the output on the, in the game, and the uh, red crosshair is the um, input from your, your control device. So if you look at the elevator here at the back of the SE5, uh, when um, by default you have a zero input um, from the joystick, it uh, has an incline which forces the nose up. So that's a bit of a problem. So how we can fix that is we uh, click uncheck use all uh, responses for this plane, make sure that the axis we have selected is pitch, and then what you can do is you can draw points on this line. And you want to put in a point here at zero in the middle and drag it down. And as you drag it down you'll notice the elevator will start to depress on the back of the SE5. Now I like to have mine set to about 41, so minus 41 about that. So what that means is here you'll see 0 uh, in the red crosshair go equals minus 40 in the white crosshair. So it means if there is zero input from, um, if there's absolutely no input coming from uh, my joystick, um, there that there will be a minus 40% disincline in the elevator and this should help us to fly level so you see there now the elevator is lined up with the rest of the tail there so that is how you fix the nosing up issue so here let's look at it again from another angle so I'm going to switch on the uh, default response curves so use all planes responses and you should see there we go the elevator has popped up so that would force our nose up now again, if I go into my options and switch it to the one that I've created, pitch, and apply, you'll see that there we go, the elevator now is nice and lined up with the rest of the tail of the aircraft. Just other, one other thing here quickly about the response curves. You need to make sure that you have, on the pitch here, selected smooth rather than symmetry. Symmetry will then, what it will mean is that um, for... Uh, the um, negative and positive ax uh, the input on the axis, so uh, nose up, nose down, it'll be the same either way. But we don't want to do that, so what we want is to uncheck symmetry and just have smooth there. So smooth, what it'll do is just iron out those um, uh, lines between the do drops you do dots that you draw. You can see they're a little bit more rounded rather than uh, straight. So let's see how that looks uh, when you are flying before and after the curves. So, let's see how this looks now with the default response curves. Switch to use all planes and apply. You'll notice whoosh, up goes the nose. And you'll see there, yep, the elevator is pushing us up. Now that's a real pain in the backside, because we're continually having to fight against the uh, SE5 wanting to climb, which can get quite tiring. So now let's switch on my response curve. And level her out. And now you'll see the nose is it's coming up a little bit, but very, very, very little. So it's a lot less work for me to do. Now the other wonderful thing that the SE5 has is a stabilizer. So you are able to 
play around with uh, the setting of the uh, master for the elevator. So this is very, very useful. So I'm, see I'm drifting up a little bit at the moment. Now if I just apply a bit of the stabiliser, see that? Apply it so that it forces the nose down a little. That allows me to fly the SE with hands off. There we go. I've taken my hands off the control column and I'm flying the SE5 hands off. And doesn't that make our life much, much easier? Now I set the stabiliser as one of my axes on my throttle quadrant. So I have a slider to my left there. Uh, just like any of my other sliders for the mixture, for the radiator and for the throttle. So it's very, very easy to control. There are a few uh, tricks you can perform with the, uh, the, um, the stabiliser, which I'm not going to show you now. I think the most useful thing you can use it for um, is for augmenting the work you already do with um, trimming the elevator uh, on the response cones. So there we go. I am now flying level flight hands off with the SE. Now another important feature of one of the uh, aircraft that you can buy for Rise of Flight is the um, altitude throttle that is fitted to the engine on the Fouts D12 and the Fokker D7F. And this is what makes this aircraft so deadly. Now I'm not going to go into the advanced technical uh, explanation of how this works, but essentially what it does is it allows for constant compression or improved compression and therefore better horsepower from the engine at high altitudes. So what I generally do, what I've done on my controls is assigned this to uh, the same axes as my mixture control, um, simply because uh, most of the German inline engines, I think all of them, do not have auto mixture control, so you don't have to adjust the mixture. So you'll see here that there is the altitude throttle. Now you want to start engaging this um, to produce more uh, revs on the engine, or you can start engaging it at about 500 uh, metres. So you can get away with about a third of the throttle engaged, the altitude throttle, uh, between a quarter and a third at about 500. At 1,000 metres, you can get away with half, um, and then at 1,500 metres and above, you can uh, turn that thing on full whack. However, if you engage it at too low an altitude, the engine will start making a clunky noise, it, and it will damage the engine, and eventually your engine will uh, stop working. Uh, it can help you get out of some tight spots, so you can engage it at lower altitudes temporarily, but I do not advise using it for an extensive period. So let me just show you the difference the altitude throttle makes and why it is so important if you intend to fly the Fouts uh, D12 or the Fokker D7F at high altitudes. Here I am in the Fokker D7F in a dogfight at about 2.5 kilometres. I am taking on an SE5 and the SE5 is a very, very fast aircraft. So I'm turning towards here, it's just an AI pilot, and I do not have the altitude throttle um, engaged. So I am, I'm, I'm closing on him a little bit, but I'm not making much difference. So I mean, he's pulling away from me, so what I do is I turn on the altitude throttle to full, because I'm over 1500 meters, and you'll see there that my revs suddenly go up by about 500 um, RPM. And now I'm able to easily close on the SE5 and going for the kill. I was um, in an online dogfight uh, a few nights ago with a few of my friends, uh, Jacob and Bidu, and we were taking on, I believe, Ice Age. Um, now, I was flying uh, in an S, uh, you know, sorry, SPAD 13, and uh, my other two wingmen were on a SPAD and an SE5, and uh, the D7F being flown by Ice Age was able, at about three kilometres, to continually stay above us, and we were totally unable to climb up and get him. And that's because of that fantastic BMW engine that gives that um, extra power up high. So here, even when he pulls up, I'm easily getting my nose up to take shots at him. So that's when the D7F is deadly. And likewise, the Fout D12. Um, if you are engaging those aircraft in multiplayer above uh, 2K, um, I suggest you try hit and run tactics and get above them because otherwise you'll find yourself in a world of trouble. So here we go, um, I've been wearing him down quite easily and I've finished him off with a few blasts on his wing. There we go, sorry about that, um, my old friend. There we go. Now, what does it sound like if the altitude throttle is engaged when it shouldn't be? Now here we are with full altitude throttle um, at quite a low altitude and you can hear that kind of sound and that's telling us uh, that we've engaged it too low. So if you hear that, Whatever you do, don't keep the altitude throttle on. Disengage it. As I say, don't engage it below 500 metres, or try not to, unless you're in a tight uh, situation and you need a quick burst of speed. So I hope you found those two things interesting. Um, 
the trimming of the SE5 and sorting out the response curves, as I said, I don't think that's in the manual, and that was taught to me by my good friend Wing Warrior, probably the finest SE5 pilot uh, in the world that I know of. And the altitude throttle, there is some information uh, in the manual. I don't believe it tells you sort of the kind of safe altitudes to start engaging it and to which degree. So I hope you found that useful. I'm sorry for a few of the mistakes I've noticed going back through the editing. Um, I put in the corrections in the captions. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to put up uh, some more beginners episodes soon. Uh, salute you. See you in the skies. And let's hope more beginners come and join us.